Bravo, lady boop. Look at the chat messages. Go. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there you go. Cool. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no warning, no nothing. It just goes, holy hell. I said three, two, one. No, you didn't. You said, said, look at the chat messages go. <laughs> and then you aimed at the camera. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> uh, it's the glare off that head. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi guys, hope you're having a great Saturday. Ours is off to a start. We're going to call it that. It's a start. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. We have um, a couple of things. Um, don't forget, all of those orders that you guys have been placing on the website, we've been shipping them out as fast as we possibly can. One more week to go, and then all of those orders for the entire month are all going into a hat, and then we're drawing for that light tablet. So one of you wonderful people is going to win a great little light tablet for your studio and uh, we have awesome giveaways for today um, as I frequently tell you I have really great supporters uh, for this channel um, we have giveaways from cupboard distributing today we have giveaways from dynasty brush today we have giveaways from southern ridge trading and from viking woodcrafts <laughs> and i think there's something in there for everybody so there are seven goodie bags they have everything in them from i think there's ornaments in there there's there's a bunch of stuff in there so yes we have seven giveaways and you get to hear the music that is my washing machine. <laughs> it's in the next room and it was still running. So we have seven giveaways today. So Renee is going to... Um, Renee. Pardon me? Renee. Renee. You said Renee. I did? Yes. I can't imagine I would do that, but okay. <laughs> Renee. <laughs> there, we've changed his name. To Renee. To Renee. <laughs> really? It's not a good name to No. Get. Not at all. That The word does not bring about pleasant thoughts. So, he's going to um, randomly select your name. He's going to load them into his little spinny thing there. Spinny wheel. As we go this morning, or this afternoon. And, um, and then he's going to leave me with everything to close out today because he is actually working a concert this afternoon and this evening, so he has to uh, love us and leave us. Yep. So he's got my phone set up as a remote control right now so that I can operate all of these cameras from it. So bear with me, <laughs> please. <laughs> so today's project, um, we're going to do hot chocolate. It's actually, there's two patterns that use the same process. Um, one is called snuggle up and watch it snow and the other one is called hot chocolate. So we're going to do hot chocolate today, but I thought it'd be a good idea to um, do the couple of elements that are in Snuggle Up and, and Watch It Snow uh, as well, so that you can do either one. So because the techniques sort of overlap for both pieces, so um, I'm gonna show you how to finish out the uh, Snuggle Up and Watch It Snow as well. So we're going to do hot chocolate today. It's on one of my favorite surfaces from Cupboard Distributing, which is that uh, arched sign. I love this. This wooden piece is one of my favorites. As you can see the other day, I posted, I don't know, probably 10, 12 pieces that I've done on this surface. Um, <laughs> tad obsessive, I think. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Just show the other And... Um, this is the uh, snuggle up and watch it snow piece. I love this one. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, but there's a couple of things that are different in it compared to the hot chocolate. So we are going to cover that as well. So we'll pay a little more attention to the, um, to the mistletoe and, uh, and show you how to paint the cookie. So we've got a lot to cover today. Um, this is a fun piece. Once I got started on this, I couldn't get stopped, hence the reason for the two designs. So, um, and initially I had started out with a sketch, did it on a surface, absolutely hated the background. It was horrible. It didn't, nothing worked. Clash, clash, clash. Didn't like it. Um, so immediately painted over the whole thing and started from scratch. And so uh, I'm much happier with the end result of these ones. So... Do you have anything to add, my good man? Well, somebody asked what concert I was doing. 
Yeah, what concert is it tonight? Uh, it's cl uh, the, the rapper is called Classified. Canadian rapper. Oh, okay. From Nova Scotia. Alrighty then. Yeah. Um, last night I did security for Mr. Jimmy Rankin. Jimmy Rankin. From the Rankin the family. The Rankin family. They're from Mabu, Nova Scotia. Nice place. Any place in Nova Scotia is a nice place. Yeah, you can't really can't go wrong in Nova Scotia. No, you can't. It's kind of like New Brunswick. You can't really go wrong here either. Yeah, you can. No, not really. Well, yes, I suppose. There's a couple <laughs> you places. You be stuck on the... Renews Highway. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a couple of places in the province there where there, there's you and nothing else. Uh, yeah. The Renews Highway is a stretch of highway that sort of bisects the province. And um, you could go a long way. There's no gas stations. There's only moose and gravel, the occasional RCMP vehicle. That's about it. I would take Rankin over a wrap. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the Rankins. The Rankins make great music. Uh, it just, from a security aspect, it's, a, it's the crowd. Yeah. Last night was, the age group was easier to control. <laughs> They're a little bit more mature. Tonight, mature. I have a strange feeling it's going to be interesting. So. Yeah, it might be. Then again, yeah, never know. Yeah. All right, guys. If you're ready to get started playing with hot chocolate, yeah. so am I. All right. Let me go tickety, crackety. Here we go. I like this piece. This one is a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to do something that was... Not necessarily overtly Christmas, um, but I wanted, I know, I, <laughs> shush, um, I wanted something that, um, you know, kind of had a festive air to it with a few of the, you know, Christmassy elements, but not strictly Christmas. I mean, we could easily change this up. You could put, um, Renee suggested like a curl of chocolate instead of the holly leaves up there yeah, um stick of cinnamon a stick of cinnamon instead of the candy can. i mean there's all kinds of fun things that you could do with this so um it was fun and then of course it has to have lettering especially this type of thing i just think it's more fun it, that and then doing the lettering so that it looks like you know milk chocolate and um, I like the idea of the, the lettering with the peppermint sticks. And I do this type of lettering a lot for Christmas stuff. Um, last year I did the um, uh, Naughty and Nice ornaments with the holly berries. And I really do like this red-white um, striped effect, which also brought me to doing that mug um, I know I'm always seem to be painting teacups, so I decided to go with mugs this time. I know, big leap. It looks like a teacup. It doesn't look like a teacup. <laughs> so um, I, that's one of the reasons that I went with this, and it's got to have the greenery and you know the bright red berries and whatnot. So this one is really straightforward. It's a lot of fun. There's some really you know simple techniques involved here. Um, instead of going with marshmallows, I went with whipped cream because one, I prefer whipped cream to marshmallows in my hot chocolate. And um, I just thought it would be something different. So that's what we're going to do. So I have already prepped um, my piece. So which me all that means is that I have my base coating done. And <laughs> We're going to start with stenciling. The stenciling part, I think, is um, this is a fun technique, and uh, it's very simple. Uh, but you're going to arrange your stencils so that you get, I don't know, I like to see about five stars on mine. So I'm going to arrange them like so, so that they fit within the confines of our mug. And I'm going to grab my tape. Because for this technique, we need to make sure that this stencil is stable. We need it to be fairly solid. How do you curve the lettering on your membership projects? Did on a plate? What? How do you curve the lettering on membership projects on a plate? How do I curve? Oh, two. Uh, when it comes to doing something like that, there's a couple of different ways to do it. You can use some software, some graphics, or something like uh, paint will work. And a lot of the time it has that stretch. Yeah. You can bend the lettering. It has that option and some basic graphic software. You can do it. To do it manually, that's a different story. That 
requires making sure that your measurements are all in place and segregating, segregating each, each letter mm -hmm. and it, it's a little bit labor intensive little uh little signage yeah there's a bit more to it than just uh sticking the letters on so um and, and that's an ex actually an excellent one to cover in, on another day because then I can show you how it's done as opposed to tell you how it's done. So. so I'm going to, I'm using a little bit of warm white. You can use gesso for this if you want to. And I'm going to put a layer of white over my stars. Where do we get all these stencils? <laughs> This stencil is, um, it's one of the M square. It's on the website. Yeah. Which is? I forget which number. I think it's 54. No, the, website. the website is tracymoreau.net. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> so I've put a coat of white over top of that star. And I'm going to dry this really quick. Yeah, people start ordering <laughs> and um, I'm going to use a nice bold yellow, and in this case, I believe I use mar marigold. Fifty-eight. M two five eight. Yeah. Is the stars. The stars. So I'm using a little bit of marigold. So. I've got that white. Now the reason I put the white down is so that I'm not competing with that red stripe for this. And so I'm using marigold and I'm going to put a coat of the yellow over top of that white. Just like so. I want these stars to be nice and bright and I'm going to leave that there and dry it real quick. And then I'm going to recoat. So another coat of yellow over top. Now I'm going to do this probably three or four times. A little bit of white on there, I think, because I'm still seeing a lot of that red showing through. So I'm going to put another coat of white on. And then I dry it. And another coat of yellow. I want there we go. Now it's opaque. Now I'm not seeing so much of that red peeking through the yellow. Since I don't have a steady hand as, as you, <laughs> could I use my Cricut to make a stencil? Absolutely. Would it look nice? Absolutely. Would it look as nice? Absolutely. Um, the one brilliant thing about a, a Cricut is mm -hmm. that it makes lettering beautiful, straight, smooth. You can't can't go wrong. I have a, a Cricut Joy that works like a charm, and, and I have the, uh, the which one is that? It's Explore the Explore Air, Air. So I have the Explore Air and I have the um, the Cricut. Yes, you can make those one-time use stencils with it, and they're fantastic. If you're going to make a multiple use stencil with it, you're going to have to put in bridges so that the lettering doesn't fall apart. Um, and that takes a little bit of work, but it's certainly, certainly doable. So now I want to add a little bit of shading to our stars and I'm going to do that with a tiny bit <laughs> of this is orange flame. I'm just putting a little bit on my stencil brush and I'm only going to do this on one side of the star like so. So just one side of the star, and I like going to the lower left. <laughs> well, I'm behind already, so I'll just watch and paint later. <laughs> I thought I was ahead of the game with the white base basin, and you threw me a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just putting that little bit of that orange on one side. So I'm going to the lower left side of the star. And what that does is that it gives you an instant bright highlight on your star. And I missed one. Look at this. How did I do that? Orange flame question mark? Orange flame is a gorgeous orange. It's a decorwort acrylic and the item number is DA315. 
This is one of my favorite oranges. It's nice and transparent. It's really hot, hot, hot. Looks great with every yellow. It's orange flame. It's orange flame. Oh, so really? there's our stars. 123 of them in there and only 66 likes. Shame. Shame. So it's only half of it's only, it means only half of you are getting entered for one of the seven seven prizes. Seven prizes. And we gotta have them all drawn before you go. Yeah. So I'll leave one for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I've got my stars in place. I've got my orange done. And that's it. That's as difficult as that is, just using that star stencil so that you get a variety of, uh, of sizes on the mug. And I like to have an odd number, so I've got five in there, which is perfect. So next, we're going to... What do we want to do next? Well, let's talk about that whipped cream. Uh, we have a Linda D. I'm new here. Uh, is the wording painted on or pressed on? Uh, the wording is painted on. Uh, do you show how to get your background? Yes. Yeah, she does that last, believe it or not. Yep, this background <laughs> is done last this time around. Usually I do it first, but this one is done last and for a reason. So we'll explore that. It, it gives depth. It's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, did you use gesso before warm white? I did, uh, simply because I'm working over black. Um, I'd have been here for a month of Sundays or, you know, trying to get that black covered with all with just white paint. So I've put on a little bit of gesso just to fill things in nicely. Uh, where is the pattern? Tracemoreau.net. Yep. That's where the pattern is. It's up on the on the website and it's listed under new products. It's in the very top of the menu on the first page. So we're going to shade that whipped cream in behind that holly around those leaves. I'm using uh, this one is just a 3 8 angle and this is a little bit of Bahama blue. Of course. Of course. And Wherever it's tucked in behind something, that's where it gets a little of that Bahama blue. And where it separates. Renee, I'm sending your mom a goodie baggage. Can you guess what I'm sending? Cookies. Yeah. That's Karen, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Karen, of yeah. course. So the backside of that whipped cream gets a little float of Bahama blue too. Now I usually shade whites, most whites I should say, with Bahama blue and then that shading gets deepened with you guessed it. And if you didn't guess it then you don't pay much attention to what I do. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to rinse out this brush and believe it or not, I'm going to shade all of that with some asphaltum. I am correct. Apparently cookie says the answer. Yep. Ginger snaps. Ooh, ginger snaps. Mm -hmm. makes good gingers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I'm switching to a larger angled shader for this. Um, because I want a nice wide float and I'm using a fair amount of water for this or glaze either or will work and I make sure that that Bahama blue is dry and I'm going to put a weak float of asphaltum right over top of that blue you always spelt it wrong <laughs> Ashfaltum, Ashfaltum, Ash. Yeah. <laughs> it's a difficult one. Nothing better than homemade ginger snaps. Oh, and Karen Jones makes the best ginger snaps. They're so good. Yep. You have that with a hot cup of coffee? Oh. Yep. That's a good way to wake up. So there is my shading 
for my whipped cream done. It's just that float of Bahama Blue, and then you go over it with a heavily thinned float of Ashfaltum. And it does two things. One, it keeps it from getting too cold. It helps enhance that white look. But that little bit of Ashfaltum kind of gives it a slight greenish cast, but it also gives that white a little bit of a warm, almost a vanilla flavor. And so it works really well with all of these nice hot colors. So the next thing we want to do is to shade our peppermint stick back there. And I'm doing that with a float of uh, Prussian blue. Yes, Bob is here. So He's never too far. I am floating down the left side of that peppermint stick with some Prussian blue and then in behind that whipped cream. And that same Prussian blue is going to go on our mug. So we're going to shade under the lip of our mug with a float of that Prussian blue right over the red, right over the white, right over those stars. Just like so. And you can let that color walk out a little bit. If you need to walk it down, that's okay. Hey, where is my paintbrush? I belong to Tracy's subscription group from the beginning. Where is your paintbrush? Let's open another window. Let's see. <laughs> and then we're going to shade along the bottom of this mug too with that same float with that Prussian blue so we want darker under here and darker at the bottom that's what gives you that curve and then we want it brighter towards the belly of this mug and then we're going to come down the left side and in behind those leaves with it as well, just to give that nice shading. And now I'm going to shade underneath that with that Prussian blue right on that, the base of that mug. So we need a darker shadow underneath it with that Prussian blue. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. That one is just not cutting it. There we go. That's better. Seeing a Janine Osborne. Hmm. Um, there we go. So there's our shadow underneath. And now we've got to put some hot chocolate in that mug. So I'm going to use a little bit of thinned asphaltum right in here. And this is about all I'm doing to that hot chocolate. I just want to put that asphaltum in so that we have that brown tone and it's not just black. And it also gives me a chance to clean up a couple of little baubles that I have here so that it's nice and clean. And in underneath those leaves. I do not have a Janine Osborne in, on the channel membership group. I don't know. So we'll have to check that after. Yeah. After the live. And get that sorted out. Black background is pretty hard to cover if you don't use gesso or decor chalky gesso. Yeah. 
My picture is blurry. Anyone else? Well, pretty good here. <laughs> so <laughs> there. <right> here. <laughs> <laughs> so there are. There is my hot chocolate. I just noticed something. I need to fix. I got a little spot back here where there's whipped cream. What's the criteria for the drawing? Just have to comment uh, and like the like the video. That's it. Yeah, like the video, and you're here. Yep, that's it. Did ya? <laughs> so I'm putting just a little Bahama blue in a couple of spots that I missed in here. So I have the shading on my mug done. Let's go over to this handle here because it's supposed to look just like that. Do we have to share too? You don't have to, but it would be appreciated. Yep. Subscribe. Yep. Hit the subscribe button. You don't even have to be a subscriber to win. You no. Just have to like. Yep. Just like it. Hit the like button. Let us know where you're watching from. We like that. We like to see where everybody's from. No big deal. I was just checking. I'm not worried. I was just wondering. It's. <laughs> it could be something as simple that if you didn't set it up for reoccurring payments, then your month ran out, so you. Yeah. You lose your brush. YouTube is a weird. <laughs> I have choice words. Uh, I have separate binder for all Tracy's patterns. <laughs> I actually kind of. I have a few of them. A few of them. Hey, there's a cat. Yep. And she's wondering why the door's closed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you out. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or a 13 year old baby so I can't believe I forgot to paint that but. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this real quick and then we're going to shade our handle a little bit it's a couple of nice things about working on a black background that um comes in handy. I'll just float this with a little bit of Prussian blue just to shade that deep in the shadow back here because it needed it. Uh, did you use a rigger to paint the stripes? Uh, yes, actually I did. I, I like my my number two for this because it's, you know, I can paint up to a quarter inch wide with that. I like that brush for that type of thing. So yes. <laughs> that woke up my dog with a cat meow. <laughs> so um, the next thing we're going to do is start uh, developing some of this stuff in the foreground here. And that means adding the shading to these leaves. And uh, I am still out of plantation pine, so I'm going to use some sap green. But generally, I would use uh, plantation pine for this. And all of these leaves are all base coated with antique green. So I'm going to shade them with either plantation pine or with sap green. If you don't have either one of those colors, don't be afraid to use a little bit of black green or black forest green. You just need a dark value of green. So I'm going to shade down the center vein, just like so. Where can we change the car that we use to charge? Oh, go to the um, go to your own channel. Go to subscriptions and memberships, purchases and memberships. Click in there. It'll show. It will direct you how to do that. I found that by accident the other day. Oh, did you? <laughs> I was looking for something else. Uh, the cat's name is Soot. <laughs> yep, that's... She's 13 years old. All black with a little white patch on her chest. 
And she's a diva. She's very much a diva. And she's spoiled rotten. <laughs> Do you paint under all elements with white gesso before you base coat with color? If I'm working on a black background, yes. If, I, if the background is dark, it is always a good idea to put a layer of gesso or white paint on. It's going to make your other colors much brighter and they'll stand out much nicer. <laughs> yes, so it is sassy. That's a good word for her. She is sassy. But as sassy as Dot. Dot's been a little bit of a diva this week, too. Yep. <laughs> well, it's because I've been away from the house more often. Yeah. Right now she's laying in the middle of the lawn watching Dad clean the car. <laughs> it's and her she's favorite. quite content. Well, she likes to lay on the air. <laughs> yep. Can't do much else. She would run around the yard if she could. Has wheels, will travel. Dad got, got her on a one of those mats. Oh, so she's got her own little spot. Yeah, she's in the shade. And... We have a house full of very spoiled animals. <laughs> to say the least. I keep, I keep saying if Dad had his own dog, she'd be fat. Oh. He'd have fat dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. Very fat, very spoiled dogs. Uh, Little divas. Is there a particular gesso you use under the white? My favorite. By far. Clear gesso, chalky gesso, white gesso? Is this one. Um, chalky gesso I like on canvas because it's so smooth. It's like painting on velvet. It's beautiful. Um, this one is the the media gesso i love this one it's super thick covers really well i love that it retains texture that's one of the reasons i like it so much but um this one is a little difficult to get right now but honestly any good gesso any good quality gesso will work beautifully what it comes down to is your personal preference and i like that gesso a lot <laughs> All my fur babies are spoiled rotten. Two cats, two dogs. Yeah. 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 Oh, believe me, I want a, I want a second dog. Mm -hmm. I, would have, I would have gotten a second dog when I was still in Winnipeg. <laughs> There's a reason why my husband and I do not go to animal shelters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed in animal shelters anymore either. No. Because we would come home with them. That's the problem. Well, I would. I almost came home with a fifteen-year-old uh, German Shepherd. I, yeah, I could see that. And it's because of your heartstrings. Yeah, but he was still active. He was still healthy. Yeah. He was just. He was old. Yep. Poor yeah. person. Yeah. And he shouldn't be in. No, a I shelter. don't think any any animal should, should be in a shelter. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna finish out these leaves. Ta -da! I like that little shadow at the base of the leaf. It helps give it that curve so it doesn't look like a flat leaf. What size canvas are you painting on? This one is an artist panel and this one is, um, I think it's five and a half by 11 and a half. I don't know, but I think soot nearly toppled them over. <laughs> yeah. There's a pile of them up top there. Um, She's setting up a Rube, Rube Goldberg machine to try and <laughs> kill, kill somebody. That is quite precarious. Well, this is the nice thing about this type of a design is it'll fit on a variety of, of surfaces, not just, you know, perhaps the one that I've used. I didn't have another one of the one that I used, so I just found something that was, you know, roughly a foot long and gave me enough room to put this design on it and it works. And I have I have these on the website. I like the surface. It's just a, a little uh, cradle, an artist's cradle. They are a nice surface. 
So now that I've got that holly and all these little tiny leaves uh, shaded, I want to shade this mistletoe. It's shaded with the same color, uh, but you're going to thin it out a little bit. And it gets shaded down at the base here so that we have a little bit of a shadow down in the bottom of the leaf. And then I'm going to put a little shadow down the center of the leaf as well. I keep telling my hubby our dogs do not need multiple treats each day. He is not helping their health and lifespan. That depends on the treat. And the dog. And the dog. <laughs> You can get away with doing three, four treats a day, depending on the treat. Yeah. If it's pup cups from Starbucks, not so much. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> big, big difference between amount and quality. Yeah. Quantity and quality. Yeah. I'll Absolutely. go for quality over quantity every time. Yeah. We kind of have to rein your dad in <laughs> a little bit. So we need, uh, I've got the shading in place on the mistletoe and on these holly leaves. So the next thing we're going to do is these berries. And I've got a base of white down on these berries. And the reason for that is that I want this red to be nice and bright. And I also don't want to be here until next Christmas putting red over top of red over top of red till I hide all that black. So I put down a little bit of white gesso um. so that my berries are going to be nice and bright. I've been on YouTube waiting, glad I decided to fool around to find you. Uh, I have missed a lot. Will this video be available? Absolutely. Yep. It'll be available on the, the YouTube channel for all to see. Yep. And you can watch it again and again as often as you want. And you can, if you ever have any questions, you can pop them into the, the comment section underneath the video, or you can go to the website and click on the message service on the front page. And we're more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So I'm just using, I've used a little bit of country red. The four-year-old shepherd that will, I will send y'all has been me a company dog. <laughs> I, I'll gladly take a four-year-old shepherd. I can work shepherds quite well. It's kind of my specialty, really. Yep, it is. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Renee is a dog trainer. Um, he's trained canine, drug dogs, and search and, search and rescue. So, and that was Miss Dot's job for the longest time. Yeah. Until just recently. Did a lot of police canine work. Yeah. And yes, shepherds are very easy to work once you know how to work with a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> So my berries are all nice bright red. And I got a berry down here on this mistletoe that is now gonna be white. And I'm gonna show you a quick trick about um, tracing and transferring something that is round. It is quite irritating when you're working on a project and none of your berries are the right shape, right size, they end up egg shaped or too large or too small. And this is my trick. This is, um, these are shape makers. What? Do you use a pouncer to paint the berries? Yes, you could. It's a Ooh, that actually is a great idea. Let me show you something. Cause in the prize packs that are going out, is a brush called a fountain brush. Is it like this? I gotta get a, no, no, that's not a fountain brush. No, like a fountain brush is actually, um, it looks like an inverted, like a fountain. Like, water goes up and goes out in all directions. 
in this case, the bristle goes up and out and around in all directions. And so it forms like a, a bowl or a cup. And um, you could use that to do the berries. It's a fun little brush to use. But you could by absolutely use a pouncer. But here's something else you can use. In the makeup world, this would be called a smudger. Uh, this is called a, a small detailer foam from IPC. And this one will do great berries. You can see that this is designed, obviously, for makeup originally, but... <laughs> time to make a berry. Time to make a berry. That fine piece of paper here. So She's it, just tired of the dog hair. <laughs> <laughs> so just load it up with your base color for the berry, and you press down. Berry. Done. Done. So if you wanted to do... Holly berries, this is a great way to do them. And then they, the size is consistent. And the nice thing about this little smudger thingy is that you just rinse that with a little bit of hand sanitizer or a little bit of water, take the paint out of it. Ta-da! Done. Handy little rig. But you know what? Anything like this, a little sponge dauber, if it's small enough, will do the trick. Um, a fountain brush will work just fine for that, too. And there are fountain brushes Shepherds in are, those giveaways. Shepherds are very loyal and loving dogs. They can be. Yep. I only feed my dogs human-grade treats. Just because it's human-grade doesn't mean it's good for dogs. That's like potato chips. Those are human-grade, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shepherds scare me. I'll take Adobe any day. Dobies are goofy, wonderful. Like they're, they're, they're lovable. They're, they're they're slightly on the dumb side. <laughs> I will admit that Do Dobermans are can be on the dumb side. <laughs> and before anybody, I don't have a problem with pinning Dobermans' ears because sometimes they suffer from major ear infections, and pinning them actually helps them. Yeah not get ear infections. It allows their ears to aerate. So, uh, the 50-50, not for aesthetics, but for health reasons, we're okay with. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start highlighting some of these leaves. And I'm using a little bit of matcha green on the points of my leaves. And having said that, then I'm going to show you something really fun. Now, anytime you're use, doing something like a holly leaf, I've got a highlight on, and that's okay. It's not bad, but sometimes you really want to punch it up a little bit and really get a nice bright. Lean into something like this. This is sour apple. So I'm using that matcha green. It's a fairly opaque green, so I'm getting a little bit of white into it. So it heavily lightens the top of that leaf, but let me show you something. Just because that's the highlight color doesn't mean you can't go a little bit further. Sour Apple is a very transparent color. It's got a nice little punch of acid in it, which means it's got a high, how, high concentration of yellow in it. But look how it punches up that, that matcha green. So now we've got a little more vibrancy in it. I love Sour Apple for this. Gives it a frosted look. It does. So I have a little bit of um, the matcha green in my brush from when I floated it, but I like that little zip in there. So if you want to go even further with that, um, I know we always, all of us, have all kinds of stuff in our arsenal. Look to this. This is a little bit of neon. So if you really want to punch up your leaves, you want a little flash, a little brightness in them, don't be shy. Jump into some of that neon. Watch what happens to this leaf. So now there's that high acid, lots of light in my leaf. So it changes the look at that leaf. But I can come back to where I had that matcha green and I put that 
little bit of neon over top of that not matcha. Look at what happens to it. So now I get an even brighter green. I can do the same thing over this. So having that little bit of, of that white base green under there and then go over top of it with a neon and look at the pop you get. I love that little pop of color. So whenever you're looking at something, especially when it comes to greenery, especially on something like this for the holidays, if it really looks a little meh, a little blase, a little whatever, grab some of that neon green out of your stash, that thermal green, and float a little of that over your highlights. And look what happens. So now we've got that nice little punch of color. I love how that looks. So I didn't have any of the the matcha green on here, so I'm going to pull a little in and clean up the mess that I made there. Hello. One of our Dobies loves to play Frisbee. Not easy to get it back from her, though, because <laughs> you're not playing Frisbee. Yeah, she's we're playing tug. <laughs> no, you're be she's being obsessive with Frisbee. Uh -huh. It's hers. Yeah. She has to understand that it's a, it's a playtime. So the reward is the throw, mm. not the toy itself. You gotta convince them that th throwing it is the play. Yeah. So I'm just going to continue to put that little bit of matcha green in there. It's a little on the unremarkable side until you start putting in, floating in other colors. Uh, but it's okay. We don't, it all depends on what you want from it. I wanted light. Uh, I really like how this, you know, that little bit of neon looks over top of it. But for the moment, the most important part for us is just getting these highlights in. So I'm going to brush that out. And the nice part too is that you're not married to, you know, it's like, oh, well, you've already done your shading. Well, I've done a shading. So I'm going to come back in with another shading in a minute, and it's going to change how these leaves look again. <laughs> you paint so fast. I do paint fast. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Some of the smartest dogs I've met were smaller dogs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some of them. Some. <laughs> <laughs> Not all. Nope. Depends on how that dog was trained or treated. Yep. I mean, it's not for everybody. I'm a firm believer that a dog's place in the world is on all fours, never in the owner's arms. Yep. But there is a time and a place to carry and hold your dog. Yep. Little dogs, especially, that's how you develop what I call little dog syndrome. Yeah. They become little big dog syndrome. <laughs> little big dog syndrome, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love doing lots of layers. It really adds so much depth and makes things come alive. I agree. I love the layers and things. So the first float is never the final float. <laughs> Cocker Spaniels love that breed. Oh, that's Karen. Yep. Cocker Spaniels are... It's a hunting breed, for one. Yep. And they're not treated as such. In most cases, they're not treated as such. <laughs> So whatever I do to these bigger leaves, you have to do it to these smaller ones too. So I have a shadow at the base of these tiny little leaves. That means that I want to highlight at the tip of that leaf. Like so. My little dog loves to be in your arms. It's not a good behavior. It's a position of power. It's a position of power and you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Dog's place is on the ground. No so, need to carry a Dane. <laughs> I'm not sure you could even if you wanted to. I, I'm I'm five foot six on a good day, so if I could walk underneath the dog, I probably won't be carrying it. Just like wolfhounds and Danes are 
two giant breeds. Yeah, Afghan hounds, things like that. Oh, God. <laughs> they get lost in their fur. So I've got my highlights in place. So now I want to deepen that shadow in the center vein, which means I'm going to go back in with a float of that plantation pine or that sap green. And this is going to do two things. It's going to round out our leaves really nicely, but it also cleans up any little bobbles and rough edges that you may have on from the highlighting section. And it gives your leaves a nice curved over effect. What are you floating with? Water? I'm just using water today. You're not using Joe Sonia's? My Joe Sonia's is getting very perilously low. <laughs> perilously low? There's no other word for it. It's yeah. perilous. Um, what is a good blue in the fluid acrylic to use as a replacement? For? That's the end of the state. Oh, I'm assuming... Bahama blue? Bahama blue would be cool. maybe even the blue under there. Oh, the, well, the Prussian blue, there is a Prussian blue in the in the in the fluid acrylic, which works just beautifully. Um, the substitution for the Bahama blue in the fluid acrylics would be the cobalt teal hue. Ah. I'm a dog person, I've had them for years, can't have them where I live now. So I have a cat. Why can't you have them then? Are you in an apartment that doesn't allow dogs? Or the dog you want is illegal? <laughs> <laughs> Because I used to live in a city where the dog I wanted was legal. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have got one anyway. Uh -huh. Now we have my way. So, just about there, I'm going to separate this leaf down here from the one above it with a nice float. And there we go. I've got my highlights in place on those leaves and my final shadow. Now, mistletoe. Now the mistletoe is based with matcha green. I shaded the center vein and down at the base of the leaf with the plantation pine, but we need to put a highlight on the tip of this to soften it. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of that matcha green. And I'm going to pick up an equal amount of warm white. I want to make a very light green. And I'm going to float like this. It's a C-shaped float at the tip of the leaf and down that center vein. I love dogs more than people. I agree. <laughs> My Westie can climb trees to chase after squirrels because Westies were originally bred to chase uh, rodents out of the castle. <laughs> That's what they were used for. <laughs> they were meant yeah. to get rid of rodents. And Englishmen. Uh, have you ever painted with glow-in-the-dark paints in your project? I have. It's been a while, but yes, I have. Um, the glow-in-the-dark paint that Duck Wart makes, there's a couple of different ones. Um, they do make a black light paint that actually works really, really well. And it doesn't look like you've painted something over top of your painted work. Um, those ones are really, really nice. You can mix those directly um, and paint with them directly. I've used the Glow It, which is a medium that you can add to your acrylic paint to make it glow, or you can paint over top of things to make it glow. The downside is that if you use it to paint over something, it kind of does something funny to the color. It just kind of offsets it a little bit. Um, but we do have a new one, a new deck work medium. Um, deck work glow which is absolutely amazing it's g-l-o-w not g-l-o and it can be mixed with any one of your acrylics and they become very glow in the dark so they're wholly dependent on how much light they get they absorb the light and then they fluoresce at night which is kind of cool um, that product is fabulous it works beautifully so we have leaves done. So now let's talk about those berries. I love painting reds, shading reds with black. However, when you mix a red with a black, it can be a really harsh contrast. 
And so you have to use very small quantities of black. So I usually will start with a puddle of red first. So let me show you. So you're going to take your red and going to pick up a tiny quantity of black because black is such a strong color. And essentially what you want to do is create a very dark red. So I think that that's probably dark enough. So it's about a three or four to one ratio. So four parts red to one part black because you don't want it to be too strong. Now when I paint berries, shadow, lower left, and that shadow is not right on the edge. Oops, this is really strong. Is it? Yeah, I just too much on my brush, that's all. So that berry, way to go Trace, put it on, take it off. So you're going to bring that not quite to the edge of your berry. So it's going to form sort of a semicircle and it's going to leave a thin narrow line of the base coat. And you're going to highlight it the same way. So I'm going to bring that up. Hopefully you can see that clearly. You can see that I've left a tiny space from the edge of the of the berry. And you're going to do the same thing with the highlight. And I'm going to use a little bit of warm white. I don't want this to be a glaring white, so I'm going to add a little bit of that country red to it. I'm going to make sort of a foggy pink, a muddy foggy pink. And that's going to be my initial highlight. And I'm going to brush it out well because I don't want it full strength. And I'm going to put the highlight on in the same fashion, but it's going to go the opposite direction until the two meet. And again, it's not going right to the edge of that berry, like so. My German Shepherd eats my cat's food and my cat eats my dog's food. What's wrong with them? Nothing. There's nothing wrong with them. No. <laughs> Might be, might be the food. <laughs> so then the only thing that you have left to do for those berries is to add a final dot highlight and I, it's just a tiny little dot. Now you can do this with titanium white or you can do it with white white or warm white. It doesn't matter. It's just a dot. Comme ça. And that dot's going to be on the upper right, opposite side of the shadow. What was the name of the glow product you were talking about? It's Decorate Glow. Decorate Glow? G-L-O-W. There you go. I use black plum to shade red sometimes. Black plum is a great color for shading reds, but it depends on the red. Um, Black plum has a little bit of white in it, so it tends to be a little on the foggy side. And so I tend to use black plum with with reds that are more opaque. So country reds, tomato red, you know, the, these reds that are a little more um, earthy in tone. Burnt, yeah, that's a good term. <laughs> a little more earthy in tone. Um, I don't use them for colors like Tuscan red or... Uh, Santa reds or cherry reds because those reds tend to be a little more on the blue side and they tend to be very transparent and so I will lean towards a black for that. Or the other color you can use is a diox purple. Uh, what was this? Why do you not shade up to the edge of the berry? There's a reason for that is that that thin red line around the outside edge implies curvature. So it doesn't... I, if I shaded right to the edge on both sides, You'd lose it. I would lose that orb appearance. And that's what that little thin red line does, is it helps provide you with that orb. So now we're going to start to have some fun with our cup. 
Uh oh. What? Uh oh. Just uh oh. Having fun with the cup. Oh. I am shaded by going a little bit in from the edge till I painted the bleeding hearts last week. <laughs> that makes it a it makes an amazing difference. Yep. Fairies are bottom right near mistletoe need a float. Yep, right there. I haven't done them yet. <laughs> nope, Sandy McTeer. Hi, me. Sandy. Hey, Miss Sandy. Miss Thang did an, an absolutely amazing live on Decorwards page yesterday. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. She covered like 45 minutes worth of stenciling techniques. It was fantastic. Awesome. Nope. I didn't even notice she was in here. I bet I even answered one of her questions. <laughs> Sorry, Sheila. <laughs> Miss Sheila's had a busy week. Aw, oh, blush, blush. Name. Nope. Oh. Wheel. Wheel of names. There it is. Oops. There we go. Hello. FedEx just delivered happy mail. Oh, Sandy. Was that Sandy? Yeah. Yeah. She got her stencils. No Sandy stencil demo. Everybody say hi to Sandy. Right on. Yeah, Sandy's demo yesterday was fabulous. Let's add more names to it. Yep. How many names are on that wheel today? 90. 90. And how many people are watching? 149. That means that there's 50 people that aren't watching. There's another. Aren't, aren't, uh, there's another few. There's another few. You got to like that page, guys. And like the video so that you can get your uh, your name in on these drawings. And commenting. And I gotta remove a few. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are just member one month. Uh -uh. <laughs> so I've gotta finish out my little there berry here with a final highlight. Now I'm going to start shading this cup a little bit. We've put the that Prussian blue in, but now I'm going to tone that shading and I'm going to do that with a float of asphaltum. I thin it. There we go. We got quite, 135. Quite heavily. Sorry. So the idea being is that that little bit of asphaltum helps subdue, take that coolness out of that blue a little bit, warms it up, and it also helps warm up that white. Pardon me. Just like that. And I thin out that asphaltum quite heavily. You don't want it full strength because it's it can be a little dark. Yes to a class on manipulating manipulating images. Huh. Um yeah, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a lot. You have the right software though. Yep. I am still very much old school. I do quite a lot by hand. Yeah. I'm very new school. I do a lot very digitally. Yeah, but when it comes to lettering, um, I do use my computer a lot. Are you going to be doing any more Halloween? Oh, yeah. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. coming. All right, let's spin the wheel. He's spinning the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. K. 
Kathy Rain. Yeah. Kathy Rain, R E I N. Kathy, uh, go to the front page of my website, click on the little speech bubble in the lower right hand corner of the home page, and send us a message with your shipping information, and we will have some goodies out to you first thing Monday morning. So that means we have six more to go. Oh, there's a results page. I didn't even know that. Cool. <laughs> He's having entirely too much fun with this spinning wheel thing. <laughs> Wieldofnames.com. Wieldofnames.com, okay. It's such an easy... You just punch in the names, it makes the wheel, and yep. does the sound thing, and you can even customize it to like, different colors, or... Wow. Lots of stuff for you to play with. You can have it full screen. <laughs> This gigantic rainbow wheel. <laughs> so I'm just going back in with a littleish faultum and I'm shading, deepening some shading in a few places where I feel it needs it. And I'm doing the same thing to our candy cane back here, our little peppermint stick. I'm putting a little float of Eschfaltum back there. I've got quite a bit on the belly of this mug. We are going to throw a little highlight onto that. And then we can start. Um... Renee is easily entertained. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I guess. I guess, yep. So I'm going to, now we've got that shading done. Let's talk about that little white berry. I almost forgot about this little guy. No, I gotta get some coffee made for her. So this little berry down here gets a float of the Bahama Blue on the back side, same as we floated the rest of it. Of course, it helps if I get it right the first time. There we go. And I do the same thing to those white berries. I don't take that float right to the edge. You're going to leave a little tiny space. And then we're going to let that dry. All the rest of that. And this is where I like to tweak up a bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of little shading that needs to be done on this piece. And this is a good time to do it. So I've got that berry in and I've got my Bahama Blue. So I need to put, oops, too much water in my brush. I need to put um, a little bit of that Bahama Blue on my the edge of that mug to separate it from those holly leaves. Get in underneath there. Need a little bit there and under here. And these are small little tiny floats, but they're not inconsequential. If I didn't put those in, then this would look flat and I don't want that. So I'm going to dry that real quick and then we're going to deepen that shading with a little bit of asphalt. So all of those little shadows, they have to be done. They have to be dealt with. So there's that little bit of asphaltum in there and underneath. And this is what makes the difference is this will lift, I hate to use the term, but lift and separate. Is it separates it from the other elements in there. So I'm going to deepen this again because I just realized there's a spot missing there. There we go. And so now we can start thinking about some of the highlights. Now on that candy cane, you're going to put a highlight down the right side, and turn it upside down, and it's going to go right here. And it's just a float of white. Helps if you have water in the brush. It's a float of white. My goodness. There we go. Brightest value towards the right. Let that white sort of fade out a little bit. And then you're going to do the same thing to that handle on that brush. Or on the mug, sorry. I'm looking at my brush and thinking brush, not mug. 
and again I've come in a bit from the edge and I'm just putting a float of white right over top of the reds, right over top of the whites. There we go. I like it. And there are some final highlights. I've got a little bit of titanium white. And we're going to add a highlight to our whipped cream with some titanium white. And this is where you get to clean up a few things. So wherever things are starting to look a little sketchy, maybe not as clean as they could be, this little float of titanium white is going to do two things. It's going to highlight your whipped cream, but it's also going to sharpen up and clean up a couple of edges. So right here where you get that layer and then up the front of that whipped cream, see how much cleaner and brighter it looks? It is not an in-your-face highlight, but it does improve a few things right off the bat. Look at that. So now I've got that nice white highlight on our whipped cream. And I'm going to take my favorite liner brush. This is a 5 aught, 5 aught, 10 aught, or 15 aught extra long detail liners. Those are my absolute favorites. I'm going to pick up a little of that titanium white. And I'm going to put a thin line right on the edge of that float. There's the highlight on my mug. And I'm going to do the same thing on the edge of that float on my candy cane. There's my nice bright highlight. I'm going to take that same white. This is where I get to clean up the edge of my mug. So any little spots where there's you know, it's not particularly clean right at the edges. That's where you get to put that highlight in. Right on this belly here, there's a little line here that's not the straightest, not the cleanest. I'm going to put a little thin line of that white there. I think I'm good there. So Next, we're going to finish out these leaves. I like doing that with, again, with that liner brush. And we're going to pick up that matcha green. I want to thin that out quite well because I want this to slow, slide off my brush. So lots of water, lots of glaze, whatever you're using. And this is where I like putting in these little lines at the edges of my leaves. This does two things. One, it gives my leaves a nice little edge. It's also an opportunity to clean up any little bobbles and wobbles and things you don't necessarily like. And you get to add all of these little loopy details to things. Last name is Reinheimer. That's right, too. Reinheim. Kathy Reinheimer. She's won before. Has she? Yes, she has. Uh, she doesn't win. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, really makes the edges of the whipped cream pop. It uh, does. It gives it a nice contrast when you put that little, that little float of titanium white on a white surface, especially when you're up against something like black. Nope. Deb's awake? Deb's awake. <laughs> he said with surprise. She got coffee? If she's at a computer, she's got coffee. Yeah. I wasn't here for Deb's arrival. Mm -hmm. I didn't have trumpets or anything. <laughs> so that little bit of an outline, it just keeps things playful fun, lots of highlight, lots of movement. I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spin it again. Yep, he's off spinning it again. Hey, 
Becky Hammond. Becky, Rebecca Haman. Rebecca, go to the front page of my website, click on the little speech bubble, send me your shipping information, and we will get your goodies out to you. Um, each one of those books, I, each one of those goodie bags has got uh, stencil in it, it's got surfaces in it. Uh, there's something in there from um, Southern Ridge Trading, from Dynasty Brush, from either CD Wood or Viking Woodcrafts, or um, there's a variety of our suppliers are in there. So there's lots of fun stuff. Everything in there is Christmas related because we are having a little Christmas in July today. Um. Where did the term OT or OT, OT means zero. OT, yeah, OT means zero. It was used in um, weapon manufacturing before it was used in paintbrushes. Yeah. 30 OT 6. Yeah. Just refers to zero. Just means it's a very fine brush. <laughs> Never heard that term until decorative painting classes. If you look at your brush, it's just five over zero, five aught. So there we have our holly leaves done. Now, one of the things that I like doing, especially with these little tiny leaves, I like this little scribbly, you know, curly Q thing around my leaves. I just think it softens them. It's a me thing. <laughs> Five odd means I'm going to get my glasses. <laughs> I never leave my face. That should tell you something right there. How do you spell ought? I believe it's O U G H T. Google! That's what Google is for. Uh, ought, O U G H T, used to indicate duty or correctness, typically when criticizing someone's actions. Used to indicate something that is probable. That is it. Okay. That is definitely not the one we're looking for. No. O T T. A U G H T. Anything at all. Ought. <laughs> okay. And it's Arabic. Hmm. Know you ought of this fellow, young sir. Oh, yes, that's an old English term. Uh, OT? So now that um, matcha green mixture, I like mixing it with a little bit of white for line work for these vines and tendrils. O-U-G-H-T also refers to the number zero. There we go. Or no, or O. Yep. O-U-G-H-T. Yep. Oof. Not too steady today. I ought to know that. You ought to. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. <laughs> <laughs> so all of those little vines, those little tendrils, I just stroke those in with a little bit of that matcha green and I thin it out with a little bit of white just so that it pops on that black background. It looks a little messy 
especially with all of those chalk lines and, and whatnot in there, but if, those will all get cleaned up. Oops. There we I go. May have put the spinning wheel down this time. <laughs> so we have one more highlight to put in, and then we're going to finish that little berry that's down there. So the highlight that we're going to put, on, put in on the bear belly of this mug, I'm going to do that with a mezzaluna. Um, I'm using a medium. Medium? Nope, this is a large mezzaluna. This is just a dry brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to blend it really well on my brush because I don't want this to be really strong. But I just want to soften up some of that red with a little dry brush, like so, on the belly of the brush. And I'm following the shape of the belly of the brush, of the belly of the mug. Why do I keep saying brush? Who makes the liners you use? This is a Dynasty Micron. These ones are available from the brush guys. And I use them in all sizes. I use the 5 aught, the 10 aught, and the 15 aught extra long detail liners. And if you're shopping on the brush guys site, um, use your coupon code Tracy M. So it's capital T R A C Y capital M. Use that coupon code, it'll give you an additional discount. So I'm going to dry this really quick, and then we're going to uh, break out my pens, because you know how I like my pens. So we have Debra, uh, Barbara Delp. Debra. <laughs> Barbara Delp. Okay, Barbara, don't forget, check out the front page of my website. Lower right-hand corner, there's a little speech bubble. If you click on that, you can email us your shipping information, and we will get your goodie bag out to you on Monday. So we're going to cover all of this lettering, but I want to show you the quickly show you the finishing for this. I use these um, Uniball Signos for bloody everything. I just like these pens and I like using them. But I like sort of a scribbly line on that white, like so. I do this a lot in my pieces. I just, I like how it looks. You've been saying it wrong the whole time. It's not 30-06. It's 30 not 6 Oh! It's 5 not. Hmm. Huh. Old English for the term zero. Not. Not. Yeah, N A U G H T. Hmm. Hmm. Double not six. <gasps> and yeah, double not luck. Yeah, that's right too. It is N A U G H T. Yeah. Not. Not. I know not of what he speaks. So where did we get bought? I think it was just a shorthand? Probably. Yeah. Just an evolution. It was the English language, I think, a lot of the time. Well, it happens. It does. <laughs> it's called uh, progressive? Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes I wonder. What is the discount code for CD Wood? I think you mentioned it last week. I don't remember. Ah. Uh, you might have to dig that out. I might, because I'm not sure I have one for CD Wood. Oh, and uh, Robin Storm, congratulations. Robin Storm? Yeah. Tell me you're keeping a list. I have a list. <laughs> I have two lists. Look, 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 look. One on the computer. One on the computer. Good for you. <laughs> so this is, I just like these little, like, funky details on my pieces. I just, it's a thing. Tracy, I got the red and white pens from you. Love them. Uh, tried tracing with red. We'll never go back to black tracing again. <laughs> I know. Because you can see where you've been. <laughs> That's the best thing. <laughs> now, who gave you that? That was Carol Manhart. Carol Manhart asked me if we could get a red one because she liked to trace with a red pen. And uh, I didn't know if Uniball even made a red one, but I'm glad that they do. 
Okay, so uh, before we get on to painting this, I wanted to talk about the lettering. Um, now I've used, the color that I'm using for the lettering is honey brown. You can use raw sienna, just as long as it's something reasonably close to this color. Um, I happen to have honey brown, so that's the one I'm using. Um, it's just a dry brush, very light. Where'd my ringer go? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Losing brushes now? <laughs> I had a moment. So we're going to paint that lettering in. I'm using a very fugly number two ringer for this. You think I like this brush? Look at it. You can barely read it. It's a mess. So I'm loading my brush up with um, some honey brown. Tuesday night. Tuesday. We have a class Tuesday. Oh, yeah, the members. Yeah. yeah. Members get their <laughs> monthly class Tuesday night. Really? Yeah. And then... Um, oh, crap. Yeah. I didn't even realize. So, yeah, we're doing Autumn Gathering. And then on... Um, if you haven't downloaded your pattern members... Um, if you haven't done that yet, be sure you do that because you lose access to that link on the 31st. Yep. So you you have to get that done now, or as soon as possible anyway. Um, the new pattern goes up on the 1st of August. There goes Renee's plans for Tuesday night. Uh, nope. I don't have plans. So I'm using that rigger to paint in my lettering. And this honey brown actually covers quite well. It's got a high white content, that's why. The raw sienna you may find is a little more transparent, but that honey brown works really well. And... I don't know what you mean by review the highlights of the body of the mug. I... Oh, go back through them. Oh, you're going to go back through them? Yep. Okay. So, that rigor, again, for those of you that have seen me do lettering before, you, you can take five. Um, for those of you that haven't, um, a rigor is looks like a liner. It's actually built like a flat brush, so when you press on it, you get a flat chisel edge, which makes it great for painting lettering because it can press down on the chisel, press until the brush opens up and it fills the space, and then I can back up on the chisel edge. This brush is fabulous for painting lettering. wish my hand was as steady as yours to make the lettering look so easy. The trick to painting lettering, everyone always assumes that it, it takes a steady hand. It really doesn't. What it takes is... Uh, practice and brush control. Learning to control that brush, getting the right amount of pressure, chisel edge, touch it to the surface, press down till the brush fills the space, and then slowly release and come back up on the chisel edge. It's just brush control and it comes with practice. It's like doing stroke work. You see people that do stroke work and you go, oh my goodness, it's just beautiful and it's so fluid and it takes talent and it also takes a lot of practice to get that right amount of pressure on the brush, to get that stroke, to know when to release. And that's the trick. That takes practice. Is that a number two rigger? This is a number two, yes. Number two rigger. And the riggers that I use the most often are the zero and the number two. Every once in a while, I will grab a 10 knot, which is that really tiny one. But I tend to stick to the zero and the number two. They are the most versatile. So I've got all of my vertical stuff done. But you can grab a smaller rigger for the next part, or you can grab a liner brush. That's entirely up to you. And this is where you get to connect everything. 
and I'm doing that with my liner. You can do this with the rigger. Let's spin the wheel. He wants to spin the wheel. He's having too much fun with the wheel. Well, I also got a half hour before you get to leave. <laughs> before I get to leave, so. It. Darlene Karkmo. Darlene. So that little bit of you know using that rigger to do your lettering, minding that straight up and down, practicing that amount of pressure, how much pressure does it take to fill that space, and then knowing when you have to lift and release the pressure on the brush. That's all practice. So that's where we end up with this. And so we need to shade this lettering so that we get that nice chocolate look. And I'm going to do that with some asphaltum. I know you're surprised. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> um, uh, did the renewal memberships charge our cards this month? My card needed to be canceled due to non-authorized charge and I got my new card yesterday. Uh, yeah, they would have been charged at the beginning of the month. Yeah. Yeah. If you have to change your card information, you got to go to your own channel and change it in the settings. Yeah. Just locate the subscriptions and memberships that you have on your account and you can change it there. Yeah. So I'm just shading the bottom of each of these letters with a float of asphaltum. And I'm coming about one third of the way up the letter. And it's going to take a couple of layers to do this, to get it the right depth. So I've got my first float of asphaltum on. Now I'm going to dry this. And then we're going to do it again. When you're doing the shading on the lettering with asphaltum, are you leaving a tiny space from the edge here too? No, I'm not. <gasps> Why I, is that? Because I want this lettering to sort of drift into the background. I want the bottom of that lettering to become part of that background. So it has to look like it kind of melted a little bit. Yum. So. I use that coming away from an edge. I use that in certain things. Whenever I want something to look rounded over, um, I don't really want this to look rounded over. I want it to look kind of melty. And so I'm using that float at the bottom. And I want the darkest value right up against that black because that's going to give it that appearance that it kind of melts into the into that black background. And I'm going to dry that and I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm, th I'm saying three floats should do it. Louise Long, you have won one of those goodie bags. And number, lucky number seven. And one last one. Boop. He's making sure that you all get your prizes before he leaves to work. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bianca Cam. So Bianca, go to my website, tracymoreau.net. On the front page, the home page of the website, in the lower right-hand corner, there is a little speech bubble. If you click on that, you'll be able to send us a message with your shipping information, and we will get your goodies out to you. Yeah. So let me see list. So here's all of our prize winners. Kathy Ryan, Becky Haman, Barbara Delp, Robin Storm, Darlene Cartmel, Louise Long, and Bianca Cam. Yay. I'll, I'll leave that on your yep. packet there so you, you can reiterate that when you do your outro. Yep. 
so I've got all my shading in place for the bottom of my letters. So now I want a brighter highlight on the top of my letters. So um, you have a couple of options. You can do this with a lighter value of the paint, but I prefer to mix. So I'm going to take a little bit of that honey brown. Where's mine? It says dead. Oh. <laughs> And I'm mixing it with just a touch of warm white. And I do mean just a touch. I just want to change the value of this a little bit. And I'm going to put that highlight at the top of each letter. Just a, a short highlight, nothing too dramatic. Like so. And that little bit of highlight at the top of the letter accentuates that curvature. And it's also going to make this look a bit more melty. Because chocolate should be melty. Chocolate is best when it's melty. <laughs> so that little highlight The best chocolate always has a sheen when, you, when it's, it's melted. Yep. Let's get a shine on it. No I, shine, don't eat it. <laughs> I love chocolate. Like, really love chocolate, but I prefer, like, dark chocolate. The darker, the better. Oh, it's got, a, like, a bitter sweet? I love, like, chocolate with that tart. Oh, yummy. And again, I'm not a big sweet, sweet eater. I am, I love chocolate though, but I, I prefer more the flavor of chocolate than I do the sweet part. So I have to go buy a chocolate bar now. <laughs> <laughs> I received a goodie box yesterday from Deb. Oh, no, from Tracy. She sent me one of your Stamos. You sent her John Stamos? No. No? How'd you get John Stamos in a box? <laughs> I wouldn't have put him in a box. <laughs> I'm guessing stays on? Stays, no. S-T-Z-M-O-S? No. no. So I'm putting a final highlight on the upper right side of each letter and it's just a thin line. I took a little more white and added it to the our highlight color on there and just a little stroke. This is going to give that chocolate that little bit of a sheen that Renee was just talking about. Stamps. Stamps. And that was Karen Jones. Ah. Miss Karen got her got her goodie box. Maybe she meant stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's what she meant. <laughs> I know that now. <laughs> so there is our chocolate. And we got that nice little highlight in there. That makes that chocolate look like a little shiny, a little polished. It should always look a little slick. So there is the highlight on that. So the only thing we have left to do is this uh, hot. And I'm going to do that with, sorry, Bob is getting pushed out of the way, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to, um, we're going to put a few little stripes on our lettering. And you pushed them out of the way. I did. Nudge. <laughs> That's how that happens. That's how that happens. So, if so you're wondering where Bob disappears to? It's because Mom nudged him out of the way. Yeah, gets him out of the way. So I take my number two rigger and I'm just going to paint in some narrow stripes on my lettering, like so. Now, if you get red on the black background, that's okay because I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a second because I very rarely ever get through this without getting paint on the background. So I'm just going to use that rigger to put those little stripes in. 
like so. I try not to get the red paint everywhere, but it never works. Always manage to get it every place but where I'm supposed to. But there's also a really quick fix for that. So now I don't really try too hard about getting them all exactly the same. It really doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as they're close, it's fine. So there, I've got little red stripes all over my lettering. And this is small lettering, so it's we're going to need to clean a few things up. That's okay. I'm going to dry this really quick. We're going to shade, highlight, and then we're going to clean it all up. And then once we get all of this done, then we'll talk about that cookie. So, to shade that, uh, the word hot, we're going to use that Prussian blue. And it's going to be a small float. We're going to go right down the back side of that lettering. So off to the left, darkest value to the left. And we're going to do that to all the pieces of these letters. And again, I'm not worrying too much about that background. I just want to get that shadow in nice and bright. Come so. And then we're going to have to put a highlight on that lettering in just a sec. But I want to show you. Take your angle shader and you're going to load it up with that black paint that you used in the background and you're going to shade up against your lettering right to the edge. Wherever, you can see here, I've got that fair amount of that red sneaking out onto my black background. This is where I get to clean that up. So I just take that black and it's just a float, keeping the darkest value towards the edge of that letter. And this is going to clean up all of those little whoopsies that you've got going on. The hands aren't as stable as they were, as they once were, I should say. So we need to touch up every once in a while. So here we go. Touched up. So that gives us a nice clean edge on our lettering. Let's us clean up all of those little whoopsies that we may have going. And then once we have that done, we are ready to put our highlight on. So I'm going to dry that real quick. And then I'm going to take my liner brush and I'm going to have some titanium white handy and some warm white. So just like we did for that candy cane up there, we're going to have our angled shader and we're going to put a thin highlight up the right side. Tiny little float. Nothing too spectacular, but tiny little float with that warm white. And it's going to go up that right side of that letter opposite that shading. So there we've got our highlight in. And we're going to finish that highlight with a really thin fine line of that titanium white because we want that nice bright impact point and we're going to place that right on the edge of that highlight just like that easy peasy and that's our highlight so we have all of this in place our chocolate is done, our, our uh, lettering is done, all the highlights on the belly of this, that's what we wanted to talk about before I forget. That highlight on the belly of our mug 
there's a number of different things you can use. You can use um, a Metzaluna. I used a dry brush, like a Metzaluna dry brush. That's this one. You could use a point blender. You can use you can use whatever you like, whatever you like to dry brush with. And I have picked up a little bit of white, warm white, titanium white, doesn't really matter. And you're going to get a fair amount of that in your brush. And then you're going to scumble it because you want this brush dry. And then that highlight is just a dry brush on the belly of that mug, just like that. And make go right over the stars, just like that. We just want this to soften up, dry up a little bit. That's all we want. We don't want a really glaring highlight on that. If you do want a brighter highlight, don't be afraid to take your round brush and stroke in a highlight. If you want a brighter highlight on it, by all means, go ahead. Put a brighter highlight in. That is entirely up to you. So if you wanted to, make sure you go right through those stars. Just like that. So if you want that brighter highlight, go ahead and stroke one in. I wanted, I prefer something a little softer on this, but it doesn't matter. That's a matter of preference. So, next. I have one of these. You guys know I use this gold. Uh, this particular gold pen all the time. This is the Deco Color Premium. I love these pens. I like the metallic. It's a beautiful gold. These work really, really well, and they're reasonably priced. They don't cost you an arm and a leg. I recently, like this winter, discovered this one. It's the same pen, but in an extra fine. So it's got a super fine point, and I loved it and I thought it would be great for this piece because I wanted a narrow border on it. So let me show you how I'm doing that border. Now on the first, the one with the arch panel, I used it um, to put in a nice border along that curve, which is fine. That's not a big deal. I want this one to be about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. And so I want to make sure that I'm about a quarter of an inch down before I do this. So here's my pen. This one works the same way as the other ones. You just press it up and down to prime it. Make sure you give it a good shake so that that paint is well mixed. Pump to prime, and then you're going to go ahead, quarter of an inch from the edge. And then I'm going to stop short of my about a quarter of an inch from the outside edge. And that's, ah, damn it, didn't work. My pen decided not to work. Ah, crap. And <laughs> didn't decide now to gush. vomit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Quarter of an inch from the edge. My pen has decided it's not working. Why? Well, I got some good news here. Did you? Yeah, Ooh. Miss Debbie Matthews has joined the membership program. Debbie Matthews, she's from Texas. Miss Debbie. Okay, folks, I'm going to try this again. For some reason, my pen does not want to cooperate. Nope, it's not cooperating. Ah, oh, there we go. Good gravy Marie. This one is not cooperating. Tracy, any ideas on how we can make peppermint candy sprinkles for the top of the whipped cream? Ooh, peppermint candy sprinkles. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I have to think about that one. I am going to be leaving very shortly. <laughs> okay, let's see if this pen's going to work for me now. So, I'm going to put a gold border on. This pen's been working like a hot damn all week, and now it doesn't want to work for me. And there we go. Okay, now I got a border. Yeah. I think so. Nope. Nope. What is. And I'm afraid to actually press on this any further <laughs> <laughs> because the last time I did it, it vomited gold paint all over everything. <laughs> and that is not a good thing. Okay, let's see what we got going here. Nope, my pen. Up. Oh. oh my gosh. There we go. Hello. 
Nope, it is not my data to go pens. This is just not going to... No? No, I don't know. Cool oh, look at this. It works beautifully on the paper. It's not working on the paint. Hello. I wonder why. I don't know. So, essentially, I just use my gold pen. I'm going to go quarter of an inch. Maybe the tip is clogged. Oh, yeah, now it's working. Nope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! Yay! So, I like to go around the outside edge, but then I stop short of where... You know where my greenery is and where my image is because I don't want to I don't want to draw right over it and it if you stop short it gives you the appearance that it goes in behind the image okay so user error You have to hold this pen straight up and down, otherwise the paint doesn't flow. So, yeah, I'm telling you, lights are on, nobody's home. Now you gotta do some snowflakes and So now I, 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 I wanna do my snowflakes, cause I love this part. Um, I choose two or three and I wanna go over my border. And there's a reason for it. I need a nice dry stencil brush. Um, I want this stenciling to appear to be in front of everything else. And so I'm going to overlap my stencil. All right, now I gotta go deal with wrap the wannabe wrappers and... <laughs> well, if they're wrapping at a concert, they're not really wannabes. Well... <laughs> There we go. No, I mean I meant the crowd. Oh, okay. I don't okay. have to worry about too much of that. The, the performers. The performers. I'll probably be spending most of my time backstage anyway, waiting for them to come off stage. So there Great. is my first snowflake. All right, you have a good shift. I'll try. Be safe. Uh, you got your remote control. I do, right there. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, you want me to set you up with a, a chat quick, so you can see who people have questions. Um, yeah, please. Sure. So I'm going to pull a couple of other stencil in, and I'm trying not to go over top of my uh, painted images too, too much. Sorry. So I don't really want these snowflakes to be completely opaque, so I'm just... There we go. And I want to put in a couple of small ones because I kind of like the idea of the smaller ones. And I want them to overlap that border a go. little bit. The video's just paused. And... So yeah. that gives us a bit more depth. So our backgrounds is just a few simple snowflakes. Again, I go with an odd number. I'm using five. I wanted a larger one for the larger negative space, smaller one for the smaller. Um, if you're working on this particular surface where you've got uh, a fair amount of negative space on this side, there's nothing wrong with pulling in a couple of small ones or even one small one. Um, I actually think that that would be kind of pretty. So let's tuck one soft one in there. And I'll put another one up here. Now, I like these to go over top of that metal border because it provides you with a little more additional depth. And the last thing we're going to do is to add some spatter to this. If I can find my favorite fugly brush. Oh, I've got an angle. So I'm going to thin a little bit of warm white uh, no, let's go with titanium white. You can use warm white, titanium white, whatever you like. And I'm just going to spatter this so that it looks like snow. You can use as much or as little as you like. That is entirely up to you. I actually like this fairly fine, but I like a fair amount of it. So there we go.
So a coat of varnish, and this will be ready to hang. Except for one thing. Remember the little mistletoe berry down here? We forgot about our mistletoe berry, so I'm going to... Um, I'm taking a little bit of asphaltum. I'm using a very small angled shader for this. So this one, remember, is painted just like our previous berries. We've got that shadow comes in from the edge. We did the same thing on this one with the Bahama Blue. And I'm going to go over that Bahama Blue float with a weak float of asphaltum. Sorry, I had a little too much color on my brush there. So, little weak float of asphaltum. I'm going to let it come up quite a ways. There we go. And then I'm going to use my liner to put in a bright highlight of titanium white right there. And that's it for our mistletoe berry. So I'm going to set all of this aside to dry. It'll, I'll give it two coats, two light coats of matte spray. That will um, seal everything in nice and tight. And then uh, I'll let it sit overnight and then I'll give it a coat of ultra matte varnish. I am, however, going to talk about this. This is that uh, Factus Black Eraser. This is the one I like using on black backgrounds because I can erase my graphite lines without damaging my paint. It doesn't pull my paint off. It doesn't smear the graphite. And it is very effective, but it also does not polish that black background. I really don't like that when I'm erasing something and I end up with a shiny halo around everything because the eraser damaged the paint. And that's the wonderful thing about a Factus Black is it doesn't do that. Okay, I'm going to look at the uh, questions here. If you don't have light mocha, what can you use for painting the cookie? You can use the either raw sienna or you can use um, the honey brown, just like we did for the lettering, either or, those work. All you need is a light golden brown. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular. Um, so that is our hot chocolate piece. Let's talk about that cookie. So here is the snuggle up and watch it snow. Now everything about this piece is virtually identical to the hot chocolate, uh, with it perhaps the exception of the lettering. Um, but this cookie is is the one thing that we don't go into depth with in, in the other pattern, in the hot chocolate pattern. So let's talk about this cookie. So I've taken um, a little bit of the, I've got honey brown on here, is my base coat for my cookie, or the light mocha, either one. The shadowed area on the right side of the cookie is asphaltum. I've just painted that in to fill in that portion. The center or the icing on this cookie is the, uh, what is that pink? It's bubblegum pink. And now I'm going to use a little bit of um, berry cobbler is my shading color for this. And this cookie is really easy to get that really slick icing looking. It's a really simple technique. So we're going to use our angled shader and we're going to put two shadows in. We're gonna put one on the edge of the cookie or the edge of the icing on the cookie. So up against the edge of the icing, you're gonna put a little float of asphaltum. Just a little one, nice narrow one, and it's just there. And on this side, like so. Doesn't have to be really strong, but we do need a little bit of a shadow there. And you're gonna do the same thing here. And it's, it's not a really heavy duty shadow, but it's there. And that's going to help elevate that icing a little bit. We kind of want that icing to look like it's a little higher. And then we're going to thin out some of that berry cobbler, which is that darker pink. And this is our shading color for the icing. So we're going to go along the bottom like this. And I like to stop right at that little juncture right there because this is that bottom, this part right here. And then I'm going to come over here on the corner, come up, and this one comes all the way up to here and around that corner. 
and then this one starts here and comes up to this point here just like that that's your shadow for your cookie there's your point so now we have to put a highlight on and you're going to do that with a little bit of warm white and you're going to pick up just a tiny touch of that bubblegum pink. We don't want this to be a glaring white highlight, so we pick up a little bit of that pink, tiny amount, just enough to take the, the brightness out of that white. So it's not a snow white, but it's not a pure, pure pink either. So we just need a little bit of pink and you're going to put a float just inside the edge. Again, remember just like we did with the berries? That little bit of white is going to come in just a little from the edge. There we go. Ugh, I got something in my brush. So we've got a highlight on, and I'm going to come over here to the top part of this and pick up some of that little bit of pink, a little bit of white, that tiny touch of pink in it. Just keeps it from being too, too harsh. I'm gonna put a little highlight there. Again, I come in from the edge just a little. And then you're going to take your liner brush and that titanium white because we want this to look kind of slick and polished, right? So just at the edge of that highlight, you're gonna put in a little stroke, just like so. And you're gonna have another one right there and another one here. And these are right on the edge of that float. And then there's a little one there, little one there. That's your cookie. Now, if you really want to accentuate this, if say you're painting this type of thing on something that isn't quite as dark as that black, you're going to take a little bit of black on a small angled shader, and you're going to shade this little area right here, that little corner in there, and it will help make that cookie look just that much more dimensional. And it's just a little float And then a little bit of spatter over top of that, just to make, kind of make it look sugared a little bit. Instant cookie. So that's a super easy way to paint a cookie. Super easy. So there you go. There is your um, hot chocolate and um, how to paint the, that cute little cookie for the uh, snuggle up and watch it snow. I really enjoyed painting this piece. This was so much fun and it works really well on a variety of surfaces. It worked well on this one. It worked well on this, just the simple rectangle. Um, I, have, I have lots of these. We get them for the website and they're a really fun surface and they hang up really nicely. You could do a variety of these, one for hot chocolate, one for you know, your favorite Christmas cookies or whatever you want. You could do all kinds of fun things um, with this type of, uh, of design and then using a simple stenciling technique to embellish it. It's super easy. So I'm gonna switch the cameras around if I can do this without messing it up. Hopefully I'm back. <laughs> doing this on my own is a bit of a handful. I've got a remote control for this. I've got a thing showing me the, the chat line over there, and then I have to figure out which camera I'm looking at. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this today. I know I did. This was a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited about what's coming up for you guys in the next couple of weeks because we have a lot planned. For the membership group, class starts 7 p.m. live on right here on the YouTube channel at 7 p.m. So if you haven't downloaded your pattern for the month of July, you better do that soon. And um, the prep, the information is in the community thing. It's also posted in the Facebook group. So you'll be able to see what the prep is for the class on Tuesday night. 
For the rest of you, I have a really great piece planned for you guys next Saturday. We're going to be painting Halloween. So brace yourself for that one. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun with it. And, uh, and we have some other fun projects coming up as well. We're also going to be posting a couple of new videos, both in the membership group and for uh, the regular YouTube channel. We have video coming up for that as well. So there's a bunch of stuff coming up. Um, what else before I forget? Oh, yes. Again, Kathy, Ryan, Becky, Haman, Barbara Delp, Robin Storm, Darlene Cartmel, Louise Long, and Bianca Com. Ladies, don't forget to send us your shipping information uh, so we can get your prizes out to you. To everybody else, thank you so much for coming out every Saturday. You know that I just love it, and I'm thoroughly enjoying spending my Saturdays with you guys. And I really do appreciate you coming every Saturday and for the encouragement and the excitement and uh, and for the great ideas. You guys inspire me far more than you realize because I get down to my painting room and I'm playing down here in the studio and uh, all I can think is what fun things I can do for you guys next Saturday. So with all of that in mind, mwah, love you. Please stay safe and we'll see you next Saturday. Get your Halloween costumes out. We're going to have some fun. Bye.